So just to again recap the last uh, things that we you 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 see you saw last uh, the last three lex lecture more or less. In Semantic Web, we have some some editors for mainly ontologies, but not only. And the most common is Protégé, that is realized by the Stanford University. Uh, Protégé is realized in Java with uh, a library that is called OL API, that is one library that we will use today, the same library, in the same version. And then there are other tools like Top Brain Composer, Neon Toolkit, and other special purpose uh, application like Friend of a Friend, Editor, more specialized. Available typically on the web, and then we have some reasoner. You see with Professor Corno uh, what a reasoner uh, you saw with Professor Corno what a reasoner he is, and uh, there are some different reasoner for different uh, um, uh, variation of the OL. For a well DL, there are Pellet Two, Hybrid, Factor, Fact Plus Plus, and Racer Pro. Uh, where Racer Pro is a, a commercial product, Fact++ is based on C++. So you, have, you, you need to have the native version of the reasoner of your computer. Hermit is, a, um, uh, instead of Java reasoner, and Pellet2 is an old reasoner that it was uh, very popular a few years ago. Now is, uh, it's still available, the, the version number two, but uh, they, uh, create a version 3 of that uh, of this reasoner that is part of Stardog, that is a, a framework, closed source commercial framework that includes the new version, improved version of Pellet. So most of the uh, of well the reasoner activities move to Hermit and uh, friends. And then for the other profile, there are some specific uh, uh, reasoner that we we skip. That are only reported here. And then you have to recap how to create an ontology. We saw this a few weeks ago. So the first step is determine the scope of the ontology. Then, as a second step, consider the reuse of the ontology. Enumerate terms, keywords, words, nouns, whatever that define your ontology, your specific exception. Uh, classes, properties, object properties, data properties, and so on. Constraints on those classes and properties. And then finally, optionally, if needed, you have to create instances for this ontology. And we created a university.well ontology here, and that we will reuse today for the example. So, this is what happened up to now? Now we have an ontology, for example, or we want to query some SparkQL endpoint in a programmatic way. We don't want to open a browser, navigate to a specific SparkQL endpoint, and perform some query there. We need to maybe put together different query from different endpoints, and we need to do this programmatically in a well-specified way, maybe most time, a lot of time, uh, during uh, days or during weeks. So we can, we need to do this, operate an ontology or perform some SparkWell querying or uh, read some RDF or something like that from a software application. So to do this from a software application, there are some framework quite obviously. Uh, this framework from the semantic web, there are two main framework for doing this. One that applies to all the RDF SparkWell world, and the other that applies to the OL words, uh, ontology world. They are written in Java. It's extremely difficult to find a semantic web related framework in another language, different from Java. I don't know why it's reality. And these two frameworks uh, that are written in Java, it's quite common and quite used, are Apache Gina and uh, OL API. OL API 
uh, provides support for uh, WELL2, and is, it's the library that is used by Protégé, while Apache Gina is from three or four, since, I don't know, 2014, uh, that is an Apache project. Before it was simply an open source project maintained by a university. And Gina is for RDF, SparkQL, and uh, all these world without ontologies. We will see uh, these two frameworks today, briefly the first one, a little bit better the second one. So let's start from Apache Gina. Gina, well, is a free and open source framework for building semantic web and linked data application. Okay, well, it has a website with documentation and whatever. Uh, Gina is composed by several APIs as well as a command line tool. And as you see in the picture, there are some storage API to uh, speak, for example, with a SQL database. Uh, also inference API for performing some reasoning. And SparkQL API, RDF API, a well ontology API, and so on. It's a different part of the same framework that work together or separately as you need it. There are tutorials, sample code. Uh, Gina on the website is written that it supports a well. In reality, if you read the, the documentation, it has a, a limited support to a well 1.1. So, no well to, uh, again, basically, we don't use anybody not today use Gina for ontologies because it supports an older version of, uh, of, of a well. It has, in some cases, you use Gina for um, the RL profile that is more similar to the part of the well one profile. Uh, so all the uh, ontology API and the inference API for a well is related to a well 1.1 and not to a well 2. So again, basically Gina is really powerful and useful for RDF, SparkWell and so on, but is not to be used for a well 2 ontologies, for handling a well 2 ontologies today. So let's make some example of how to create uh, something with uh, this framework. I will only show you an example here in, in the slide. So this is how you need to uh, you create a RDF in Gina. So we want to create this RDF here. So there is a URI that is called uh, something uh, John Smith, HTTP, etc. John Smith. This John Smith has a property and then there is an empty node and a given name that is John and a family name that is me. I want to create this one in Gina. So first of all we create some a bunch of string with the person URI, the given name, the family name and the full name that is this one. Then in Gina you have to create two things. The first thing is a model. A model contains one or more resources. So inside the model, we can put this resource or other resources. To create a model, Gina offers a model factory, that is quite typical in Java. And this factory has a method that is create the default model, that populate by default a model. Then we can create a resource starting from this model. So we create a resource with the person URI because the resource is uniquely identified by the URI. And then we can add the properties. We add directly the full name properties in this way. From the resource, we, can, we call add property and we put the, 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 the parameters for this property, this bucard fn full name here and the content of this property that is John Smith. And then here we create another resource with this empty uh, node. So we create a resource with an empty node here, and then we can add the other two properties, namely properties, variable properties. 
vocard given, that is the given surname and uh, the given name, uh, a vocard family, that is the family name, the surname of the person. So in this way, in Gina, you create a uh, RDF. To write an RDF on a file or to print out an RDF, the, the, there is the write methods for available on the model that you created. So model.write a uh, output stream, any output stream in Java will write a, a model. So system out is a, an output stream that will print the model on, uh, on screen. But any file that is open as an output stream will, be, will allow you to write uh, in XML format uh, um, a model. If you want, you can also specify the format. G Gina support various format. Uh, Turtle, for example, is one of the format that is uh, supported. In the same way, model.write output stream, comma, the name of the the format that is available on the documentation of Gina, the keyword that is start in this case. To read RDF, it's really similar. You have to define the file name, then open the file name as an input stream, as you will do in Java typically, and then read the input stream. There is the write method to write uh, RDF, and there is the read method to read RDF. To the read method uh, accept two parameters. The first one is the input stream and the second one is a base URI that uh, the Gina used to convert a, bench, a possible relative URL in absolute URL. Typically by default is empty, open and close um, quote, because it's expected that you define an absolute URL. If you don't define an absolute URL, you want to, to prepend a portion of the, the URI, you can insert here the portion of the URI to prepend. Similarly, Gina supports SparkWell through a, an engine that is called RQ that supports SparkWell and it has also many other features. So it supports standard SparkWell, but offer also free text search by using uh, Lucene, that is another uh, library that is included. Uh, so you can also perform in this RDF uh, a free text search. Then you can also access any extension, the SparkWell algebra and process semantic relationship through properties, use group by aggregation, uh, other SparkWell extension, and also it has a client support for remote access to any SparkWell endpoint available on the web. So from your local or, or server-based, from your application through RQ, you can access to any SparkWell endpoint uh, in the world that you know, and so on. With RQ, if you want to create a SparkWell query, this is uh, the code. You have to, first of all, define the SparkWell qu query as a string. So, for example, here it defines as a prefix friend of a friend. Then uh, we want to select the URL of which of the contributor whose name is my name and whose web blog is this URL. So we want this information here. So we create the query like a string, then we can pass the string to the query factory create method that create the, the query. Then the query needs to be executed. So we have in Gina a query execution factory that has a method that is create, that create an execution of the query and it wants to parameter the query to execute and the model on which to execute the query. Then, after creating this object, we execute effectively the object, the, the query, and we get the result in a result set. 
So, and then from the result set, we can uh, cycle on the result set, we can access the result set, we can simply print out the result set on, uh, on screen, like in this, in this way, with this uh, result set formatter that is a pretty printer for the, the content of this result set. And then after completing any elaboration on the query on the result set, we need to close the query executor object so that it's free uh, resources and uh, uh, it enables the creation of new queries. This is the brief overview on, uh, on Gina. And we instead work with OWL API. OWL API is a uh, Java API and reference implementation for creating, manipulating, and serializing OWL2 ontologies. It doesn't work with OWL1 ontologies, it doesn't work with RDF or something like that. It works only with OWL2. It supports, well, it's free and open source that is maintained by the University of Manchester, uh, United Kingdom. That is a, that is a OWL group in the University of Manchester, in the Computer Science Department. Uh, it's free on Pursuits, it's also on GitHub right now. It supports uh, different reasoner, not a lot of reasoner, but five more or less, yes. Uh, Hermit is one of the reasoner that uh, it supports. It power, as I said before, um, the protege. And it includes, well, this, this component, it has an API and an efficient in-memory uh, in reference implementation. It's a parser and writer for RDF XML format, or well XML format, functional syntax, turtle, and so on. It has support for the semantic web uh, rules, and it has several uh, reasoning interfaces towards Hermit, for example, but also Fact++, Racer, that is the commercial uh, reasoner, and Bellet 2.0. There are some documentation and Java docs for uh, a web API. The documentation and the Java docs is as in many, many uh, open source project, project is scarce, not updated frequently, but there are something. It's better than nothing, we can say. And there is right now two version. It is the version number four that is stable and it's required Java 7 or 8. Uh, and this is the version that we will use today, and uh, it's the version that is currently used by Protégé. And there are several examples for this version. And then there is the version number 5, that is the cutting edge version, that is compatible with Java 8 only. And we don't use this now because it's quite difficult to, to cover some aspect of this, uh, of this version, and it has few documentation, a few examples, because it's really, really new as a version. So we stick with this version number four as a protege. Um, some fundamentals of a well API. A well API has three, we can say, main classes. The first, that is not a class, is uh, the well ontology interface. The well ontology interface uh, his goal is to model a set of logical and non-logical axiom, that is another fundamental class, with a name, that is a URL, a URI, that is called IRI, here, and some convenience method to retrieve uh, such axioms, so to navigate the ontology graph, basically. Then there is the OWL entity, that is anything that can be identified with an array. So class name, data and object properties, named individual, and so on. And then we have the OWL axiom, that is the basic unit. We can say that almost everything in a OWL API is, at a certain point, an OWL axiom. And it describes the, the T-box axiom, the A-box axiom, and the R-box axiom, as you already see during the ontology lecture with Professor Corner. So, briefly, before moving to, to the code, uh, we can create an ontology memory or load an existing ontology 
to create an ontology we have the in both cases we have this OL ontology manager that is uh, the, well the manager of the ontology that you create or loaded you can create and use contemporary more than one ontology uh, in the first case we uh, with this ontology manager we create uh, the manager first of all and then we create an ontology with an IRI of example the way we define or we can load an ontology by creating again the, the ontology manager and then loading the ontology from an ontology document and here in the home ARI we, we need to put a file on your, our computer on a URL because maybe the ontology is available on the internet and we access load directly the uh, internet available ontology not the local version similarly to save an ontology we can we have the save uh, ontology method that accept the, the ontology as a parameter, the file to save as another parameter and the format of the ontology, the default format of the ontology is RDF XML but you can specify other format like the OL XML format in this way with this um, class that is the OL XML ontology format so Now we will open Eclipse and uh, we are trying to build a simple application that I print out, just to be sure. Um, so we are going to use the university ontology we developed a few weeks ago and we would like to perform these steps. Well, first of all, load the ontology. Second, compute all logical inferences so start the reason then we want to ask for university individuals if you remind this Politecnico di Torino and Politecnico di Milano then we ask which degree each university offer which courses each degree offers and who is enrolled in these courses this for information cycling on the navigating the entire ontology so we take every individual for the university for the degree for the courses and from the students in this case by acting on their data and object properties yeah and this is a summary of we, what we are going to use we are going to use eclipse or well pi 4.2.8 this is the latest version of well pi 4 the Hermit Reasoner in the, in the version compatible, we can say, with the Web API and Gradle for handling all the dependencies uh, through Eclipse. Question? Not, not yet. So, let me open Eclipse. If you want to, to do with me, it's okay, otherwise, you can also see and Okay, so I have uh, um, an example already done here. I will show you the, the output. Then I will share with you the, the example uh, on the internet after. So this is what we want to uh, realize. We want to load an ontology, that is our university or well ontology, from the disk from the workspaces, Eclipse, Semantic Web, from, from a local ontology version. Then uh, we start the reasoner, and this is the reasoner. Here, this is the reasoner that start the inferences and complete all the inferences. And then we take all the uh, university name. So this is Politecnico Milano, this is Politecnico Torino. And then for each university, we take the degree. In our ontology, Politecnico di Milano doesn't have any degree in our version. We create uh, 
three degree for the Polytechnical here and we created a Master of Science in Computer Engineering and a PhD in Computer Engineering and a Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering and then for each of them we take the course and we define only a course, the semantic web course for the PhD and computer science and mathematics one for the uh, bachelor degree in computer engineering. And then for each course we take who is enrolled in this course and we define only for the semantic web a person that is me, that uh, I follow the semantic web course. So we take the information, we add an ontology and we print here. And then uh, we saw here that all the university are extracted from the, the program in one dot uh, four seconds. Um, a, a word on performances. Uh, a well API and uh, the hermit reasoner that we are using here are single threaded. So if you have uh, on my desktop computer that is older than this one, that is more powerful. Uh, it works quicker, uh, it's, it's more rapid than uh, this that here because it's single core. So if you have a Pentium 4 at 4 gigahertz, uh, it works probably better than on this one that is a quad core. So because it only uses one thread, one core. So yeah. Um, so we can create. Uh, let me clear this console. As I said before, I will use Gradle to take all the dependencies. Uh, Any one of you already uses Gradle? Yeah. Gradle? Maybe yes, not. Yes. No. No. Uh, so Gradle is a dependency manager and uh, a task manager. It's quite used, it's used uh, by default in the Android for Android application. Um, so we create, uh, it, it is able to um, collect dependencies from other services already existent like Maven. So for example, here a web API and Hermit is are, they are on um, Maven Central. So we use Gradle to take this API from Maven Central. So we have to create a new, sorry, a new Gradle project. Yes. Then we have to give a project name. Example. And I want to use this specific Gradle version and I need to set up the Java home directory because otherwise it, it takes the wrong one that is in JDK Builds the project, create the project, and if everything is right, we can finish, and here we are the project. So here in the project we have a source uh, folder uh, for the application, for testing, and then we have, uh, yes, this is the same of this, and then we have a build.gradle and setting.gradle, and uh, in here in Gradle task we have a series of tasks that we can perform with Gradle. We will use, for example, build, build, execute the build task. So 
take all the dependency, compile Java, create the jar version, perform the testing and so on and it prints out in the console the outcome of this uh, process that in this case is successful. In reality now it means nothing because we don't have any dependencies, any real code written. So first of all we need to add the uh, dependency for a web well API and uh, um, the, the reasoner that is Hermit. Let me enlarge the font. Um, okay, so we need to add the Maven Central among the repositories for dependencies. So we can I can copy and paste this one here in the repository section of the gradle.build. We need to add the Maven Central like uh, methods in Java, and then in the dependencies we need to add the OWL API dependencies that are two, this one, mm -hmm. that is compile uh, net.sourceforge.wellpi a wellpi distribution version 4.2.8 and compile netsourceforge wellpi org semantic web hermit 138.413 like a version number. These are taken from Maven Central, exactly. So we can save this one. And go here and perform build another time. So now it should look for these dependencies, download the dependencies and make it available in the project. I don't see here the downloads because I already downloaded the, the, the API, so it is the cached version. But if you go here and with uh, this menu select Gradle, refresh Gradle project, you should see here all the dependencies that uh, uh, Gradle downloaded from uh, for a web API and uh, Hermit that are a lot. Um, so there is a web API distribution, this is one, and org semantic web hermit that are the two main, uh, we can say, jar file. So we had the dependencies. So we can open the this library that's Java that I don't like it but we stuck with this for now and we can start with our so we need our main methods We started the program, it immediately works. So, what we need to do? We need to first of all load the ontology. I have the ontology. Sorry, let me fix this test because I removed the. Fix command. 
because I removed the the methods uh, some uh, library. So yeah. and okay. So we need to load ontology. I, I say that the, I have the ontology here in the, this other project, but I copy and paste this one. So, okay. So I have the ontology in this uh, in the project to. Did well in the website? This is so well, no? This is uh, It will be in the website, and now I don't know. Can we use our yeah. yeah, obviously the, the, the type of classes that we uh, no, it's not here. Yeah. But then I will give you everything uh, included the, the ontology. So we need to load ontology. So first of all, before loading ontology, we need to create uh, the ontology manager. The ontology manager, as, as we see in the, in the slide, is the OWL oh well, ontology manager class. You can, can call it manager. And we import the ontology manager. The ontology manager class does not have a constructor, but we need to create uh, the class from the OWL oh well manager static class so well manager dot create a well ontology manager we just created ontology manager and initialize it then i need to create a file object to store my ontology so file we can call it university that is a new file from resources university dot well and then I can also prepare an well ontology class for storing FT in memory my ontology. I will call it local uni and I need to import a well ontology from a well API. So now we can, we can say here we can call it init. So now we can effectively load the ontology. So we, st we want to load the local ontology in the local UNI uh, variable. So local UNI, it's equal to the manager is the one that loads the ontology. So manager dot load ontology from ontology document file and it wants a file that is our university. And it, it throws an exception, so we, for our sanity, we put a try and catch uh, around this uh, call and we work in the try just to in the try part just to be sure that everything will be catched um, then we can for example print the the ontology D of the ontology that just we just loaded just to be sure that we load the, the right of the same ontology and we get some information. So for example, we can do system.out.add 
dot print line uh, loaded ontology is uh, um, local uni dot uh, for example get ontology d get ontology d gets the identity of this ontology ri dot plus version for example we can do this and we can also um, if we want to be sure that we are loading from a local file an ontology and not from a uh, web-based ontology we can also get the uh, real location of the ontology so we can print the path on, on disk or the URL on the, on the internet so we can get the location the real location as an RI IRI from a semantic web model and IRI is the uh, equivalent of a URI for our scope and to get the real location on disk we have to ask the manager for a get document uh, get ontology docu document array so of local uni so if it's a local ontology we will see something like uh, c program documents i don't know if it's a web ontology we will see http something and then we can print this um, other information on uh, on screen print line for example from a location so if we start this project here run the project as a Java application Okay, we see that the ontology D has this IRI, that is the one that we created uh, last time. It has no version because I don't create uh, the version, probably. And uh, it prints something that is wrong, sorry. Uh, this is location not the ontology and uh, from uh, file and the full path of the ontology here so okay so next step is uh, create a reasoner and to, to be used after. So we can uh, get, first of all, and configure a reasoner, the, uh, the hermit reasoner. So to create uh, a reasoner, we need to use the reasoner factory that is called oh well reasoner factory. And we can call it a reasoner factory and we need to import so we can create a new reasoner factory notice that we create a yeah, a no well reasoner factory, but then we instance it a reasoner factory without a well because the well is a uh, well reasoner factory is an um, interface, not a real class. So, while well reasoner factory is uh, an implementation of that uh, interface. So, we then we want to do two things. First is to 
Last is to create, uh, uh, start the reasoner process, compute the, all the logical inferences, but we also want to uh, attach the output of the reasoner to our console to see what happens during the reasoner process, all these one, two, three, one hundred percent that we, we saw before. So we need to uh, configure a console uh, progress monitor and instantiate it and uh, we can also load the default uh, configuration for this uh, um, reasoner with the uh, well reasoner configuration class uh, interface create a reasoner factory and instantiate it. We create a console progress monitor to attach the reasoner to our output with the default parameter. And then we uh, configure our reasoner to use this progress monitor, to this console progress monitor with this well reasoner configuration that instantiates a simple configuration with as a parameter the, the, the console progress monitor variable that we just created. So we can say this, we set up the reasoner. Then we can create the reasoner instance. So we create a factory. Now we want to create a single reasoner, as a reasoner instance. And then we will also to classify the ontology and the compute uh, all the inferences so we can we have to create a reasoner that is on a well reasoner and we can call it a reasoner and import the interface and from the reasoner factories we can now create a reasoner so reasoner factory dot uh, create a reasoner the create reasoner wants two parameter one is the uh, configuration one of the of the version of these methods one to parameter one is the configuration the other is the configuration the ontology the other is the configuration so the ontology is local uni and the configuration is our config variable so we create a reasoner for that ontology we attach it to that ontology and we say please use this configuration this progress monitor here and we created a reasoner right now we don't uh, we now need to want uh, more than need to perform compute all inferences on the ontology so we add so that from now, now on we have a, a reasoned ontology not a plain ontology but a reasoned version of the ontology in memory with all inferences computed already computed and we can all use it directly so we can do reasoner dot pre compute inferences so reasoner please be a reasoner pre compute all in default in, uh, inferences default because we don't put any parameter here this line is obviously not mandatory we attach the reasoner to the ontology with that configuration. So if after, if we don't put this line, but after 
sorry, this line. But after we use some properties that are required the reasoner, every time a web API call the reasoner perform the portion of inferences that is needed by that specific method. Here we say please pre-compute everything so that after everything is computed, everything is calculated, no problem, no more call to the reasoner. And we add something more here. We also say inference type in this parameter that is a data structure dot values. So what I'm saying here is dear reasoner don't pre-compute default inf inferences. Pre-compute every possible inferences that you are able to pre-compute. So from now on, if, you, if we use the reasoner, you uh, act on the reasoned version of the ontology. We have every possible inferences already computed from this moment up to the end of your application. Otherwise, when needed, the reasoner compute time to from time every single inference that is missing. So now we can see if it's work. I can run again. So you see that. This is the progress monitor, so it builds the class hierarchy, classify object property, classify data property, initialize data instances data structure, and it computes the, all the reasoner process. So one more thing for the, we can say, setup part, and then we can start to navigate the, the graph. It's better, so let me say it in another way. Um, as you know, any classes, any class in the ontology uh, is as a name, like our university class, but it has a prefix that is HTTP. In our case, it is HTTP, elite.polito.it, uh, slash ontology, slash university, dot web. This is the prefix of every single uh, entity in our ontology. We can, with a web API, open more than one ontology, or, we or in our ontology we can import other ontology that has a different prefix. So we, ne we need, to, first of all, to say, dear application, this is, these are the prefixes that we are going to use right now, and we don't want every single time that we need an entity in an ontology, right? HTTP, two points, slash, slash, the entire prefix, but we want a short form for the prefix. So we can, the, the OWL API, define a prefix manager to handle every possible prefix that you uh, meet in your um, ontology, your applications. So we can create a default prefix manager. We have only one prefix that is the one of our ontology. So we can create the default prefix manager. That is, if I don't specify a prefix, this is the default that you have to use. Manager. Um, sorry. Let me import this. So we can set up as default prefix, maybe there is a better version of this. Yeah. And here we set up the default prefix that, yes, there is a better, but it's the 
complicated. So here we can set up the default prefix. As the last parameter, that is in our, in, in our case, HTTP light, let me read, dot polito, dot it, slash ontologies, slash university, dot well, we have to write the entire prefix uh, of our ontology because after this we have the, all the class names so university, students, whatever if we want to we don't need them but if we want to add other prefix we can use the default prefix manager and we call it that pm dot uh, um, uh, set prefix so we can add other prefixes to our manager so we can use the default manager the default prefix or any other prefix that we, we want we don't need now because we have only a prefix so we, we completed the, the we can say the setup uh, phase so the first thing that we want to do is get all the university okay to get all the university we need uh, a well data factory that I will call fuck that from the manager get the um, the default uh, we can say the available data factory from these so remind that our university are instances of a class that is called uh, university. So we need to, first of all, identify the class and then take all the instances, the individual of this class. So uh, then we have to define our class that we want to take uh, with an OL class. Uh, the well class interface and we call it uh, the variable universities and from the data factory we can get the OL class with its ARI we don't have the ARI right now but we will write it the ARI of the, this class the ARI of this class is ARI.create default prefix plus the name of the class that is university in our case. So we create a, a university well class from the data factory we get the well classes whose uh, ARI is uh, default prefix HTTP, li, .poly, .it, uh, and so on and uh, the name of the class is, uh, in our case, university let me do this maybe. you see that? So now we can, we need to take uh, the individuals for this class and we ask the reasoner for individuals to be sure to take uh, the individuals that has a 
a web class well defined, but also other that are uh, son of thing, but there are some properties that there is no recognized at the university, like in our case, for for example, in, if I properly remember. remember. Um, so we ask the reasoner this time, so reasoner. Then, then we memorize this in something, but reasoner dot uh, get instances. Get instances, get all the instances of what? A class that is universities. And we want only the uh, instances of that class, not of every son, possible son of this uh, class. So we put false. These get instances return a not set of a well named individual. So we can create this one. Not set of a well named individual. And we can call it DB duals not set. And we need to import uh, everything. So now, if everything works properly, we have all the instances of the university class in this variable. So in our case, we should have two uh, items here. So we can, for example, print all of them. So, uh, for example, four. Um, uh, all well named individual. Then we can call it uni, like university, in the individuals not set. We want to perform something. So now, so, so if I wrote here, we know we not a problem because this is a not set, and we cannot iterate on the not set. We can iterate on the node of a not set, but we want to really the a well named individual. We don't really care about intermediate representation. So what we need to do is transform this is a no set in a set. So that is a traditional Java set so that we can iterate over it. So to do this, we create a set um, the, of a well named individual. Then we can call it individual set. And we have to start from individuals not set and to transform a not set in a set there is a method that is called get flattened. Get flattened take a node something, a not set, and create the equivalent set without the node part. So get the flat version of this uh, uh, data structure. So here we can iterate over this individual set right now and we can for example print the name of the universities uh, individual name If we run this, we see that it found two individuals, 
The first one is called HTP Elite Polito University OL Politecnico Milano and the other is Politecnico Torino. If we want to print a shortened version of this, we can ask to the prefix manager to, we can say, remove this initial part. To do this, we can, instead of you and I, we can say PM, that is our prefix manager, dot get the short form of you and I. This take the short form of the entire URL and so we see that now it prints out two points Politecnico Milano and two points Torino because here the default prefix is empty. The short form of the default prefix is empty. Here in this space there is the we can say default prefix, the prefix name. So this is more or less the process to uh, get in classes from the in class from the ontology. Get the class from reasoner from the its name and then ask uh, for example the reasoner to get all the instances of this class and then iterate on the, the instances and perform any operation. We can print it, we can edit, we can delete. We have the object that is the entity and we can do what we need it. So let's see how to uh, instead uh, take uh, an object properties. Now we want a class that is referenced from uh, this individual. So every other degrees that this individual offer. So get, uh, we can say we want to get um, offer the degree. So it's like almost uh, parsing the instrument right? It's more like, yeah, something similar. Is navigate the graph. Mm -hmm. We need, the, in a well PI, there is. You, you have, there is an extension of LPI, a library that performs Spark well queries. Mm -hmm. So you can perform a Spark well queries after. Uh, after. But uh, Spark well query is not, uh, is not included here because Spark well query is uh, RDF technology. Mm -hmm. So it works on the plain RDF, not on the well. Uh, so there is something not standard that is called DL Spark well. But basically, at the end, the L Spark well navigate the graph. So it's not, the, and you have to implement something by end for the L Spark well. So at the end, you navigate the graph in any case. So uh, right now, we get Gopher degree. And the degree are just to, it's the offers degree data object properties. We want to uh, take this data object properties of first degree. So, similarly, before we add a, a well class that represents our class, and then we ask for this class, for the individual of this class, now we have a, a well object property. well object property impl um, that is we can call it op and we can new a well object property impl as before he wants the uri of this object property so we can again create a um, the name of the object property that is pm.getfold prefix plus the name of the object property that is offers degree. Yeah. And so as before, but instead of having a OL class, we have a OL object property. So we say we want this a well object property, the specific well object property. Mm. 
Now we want uh, all the individuals that uh, uses these properties starting from our specific university. So now we want to take for Politecnico di Torino the offered degree and after for Politecnico di Milano their its own um, offers degree. Not every, for, before we take every uh, university class. Now we want the uh, instances that reply to that specific object property for that specific insta university instance. So we need, we cannot do it in this way, get a world class and reason or get instances, because otherwise we get every, everything, we wouldn't want everything. So we need to um, use a, a support method that is the entity searcher. A support class, sorry. And we need the method get object properties values. And we want the object properties that start from that has as a domain the specific university instance as as object properties this one the offer degree and is stored in our ontology these three parameters these get object property values give us a collection of individuals so we can for example use a set like before Set the OL individuals, individual, and we can call it uh, of first degree. And then, since this return entity searcher return a collection, we need to cast the collection to a set. So, new, for example, hash set. Uh, of uh, entity searcher and now we can for a well individual uh, degree in offers degree do something. For example, we can print the degree name. Um, we can print the equivalent of this, so we can copy the individual name. So here we can copy hit this one, individual name, PM, get short form uh, of degree in this case. And we need to then add a cast uh, from degree to uh, an I or a well entity because it's in the wrong format, for example. Here. Mm -hmm. So here, basically, we already did, we already do the same thing as before with an object property. Now, for example, the, the degree um, has a name. We set up that degree as a real name in, in English, in Italian. We set up a language as a data property. So we can get the data properties, for example. To get the data properties, uh, like the degree name, we can do, again, similar to before, we have a well data property impl, a data property, sorry. Then we can call it degree name. And again, as before, we have to create a novel data property impl. 
because we need to specify how it's called this data property. And this data property is called, uh, again, iri.create um, default prefix plus degree name. We want to get the degree name data property from this degree specific individual. So again, as before, we have to use the entity searcher. This time, not to get uh, object property, but get data property, values, um, that accept three parameters before, that is degree, the individual, the data property, that is degree name, that we just created, and the ontology that is local URI. This get data property, um, again, uh, return a collection, but we, we need just to, we know that is only one and we need to print the data property. We don't need to iterate on the data property. So we can basically print this out. So let's check if everything works up to now. Okay, we get the first individual name that is Polytechnic Milano, the second, in this case, individual name that is Polytechnic Torino. Then we have a one, three degree. One is called MS Computer Engineering underscore TO. And his name is Laura Magistrale in Engineering Informatica in Italian. Then we have another degree that is the PhD. His name is Dottorato in. And the third, and finally, we have a BS, Computer Engineering, and its name, it is a data property, is Laura Trinale, Engineering Informatica in Italia. So the, the square brackets are because uh, this is a set a collection of items. Now we have only one item, so it prints out only this. So, uh, and we can continue in this way, we continue this way up to a special case. So now we can get the offered courses starting from the degree. So before we get the degree starting from the university, now for each degree individual, we get the offered courses individuals. So get offered courses, uh, that is the offered course, offers course uh, object properties. And we need to do exactly the same thing we did before. So we can copy and paste this two line. And for example, call this op1, just to don't do this in real programming. Use significant uh, variable name, please. And uh, this offer degree is uh, offer course. And we need not to start from uni, but we need to start from degree. So we need to search for object properties that reply to that specific object properties of our course in our university, but whose domain is not university as before, but the domain is the degree. And then, as before, we can for a uh, well individual a uh, course in offer courses 
we can for example like before print this one If we run this, let me. This is course name, just so. This is degree name, and this is university name. You see that we have university name Politecnico Torino, his degree are these three, and this last degree, that is the bachelor has two courses, the computer science, the mathematics one, and uh, the PhD has another course, this is a semantic web, like before, as before. Let me put this uh, so that uh, it's better. So now we can perform another step uh, that is from each course, we want to get the uh, enrolled students. That is the uh, is followed property, object property. Now, if you want to hear from this course, we can get all the data properties and so on. We want to get uh, instead, the, like before, uh, the is followed object properties. So we can do again as before. We can try to copy and paste this here. But uh, this one uh, we can call it uh, F and is the is followed. And here we have the is followed individual, sorry, in set. We get, get the object property F on the ontology local unit on the previous, that is, course, um, the course object. And now we can as before, perform this uh, three line, so you can print out the people that are enrolled in this course, in theory. So here for individual uh, student in uh, is followed, we can call it student's name. Here we put student. Here he is follow it. So that is clear. It's more clear. So if we run this, we don't see any student. We, we, if we open the ontology, as we see, we see before the, out, the right output that the semantic web course has a student that is named like me, but we don't see any students here. So we can check if the the code is right, but I copy and paste from before, so yes, it's, it works for degree, it works for courses. Why it doesn't work for students? Why for you doesn't work here for students? Maybe let's try to open the ontology. Let's check. That is the object property is called is followed for real and that it has is created for for a student. Maybe. If 
protože start. Ne, dojdeme. OK. So, let's open the deontology. Deontology, that is this one. So, let's see. It, ah, is followed object property exist? Yes. This one. Is inverse of follows? Well. Okay. So, let's check individuals. So, let's check the students. Uh, yes, there is a one student that follows something. So, I suppose that uh, it follows who would follow the students here follows uh, I suppose semantic web so it's followed it's the inverse of this one we start the reasoner so why we don't see this uh, this person among the, um, the courses. Suggestion, ideas. In the reverse, the one group doesn't contain the entity of students, no? In the reverse, uh, semantic web doesn't have an explicit uh, is followed. But the, but the reasoner, if, we, if I start the reasoner, he should uh, add uh, here is followed, that's correct. But we don't ask to the reasoner. We ask the object properties to the plain ontology. We we don't we do we don't do anything like this. Reasoner dot get something. We ask to the plain ontology. We need in this case or to be sure that to respect every object properties that are also not defined to ask to the reasoner this information. So we need to in the other case it works because the offer course and the offer degree are standard we can say are well defined property explicitly defined. In this case is not explicitly defined is followed because it's the inverse of follows. So we define follows not is followed. So we need to remove this line, basically, that is the entity searcher, and replace with something that, uh, I can comment this out, uh, replace with something that uh, start from the, ask to the reasoner for, uh, ask the reasoner for this, uh, this information. Uh, so reasoner dot get object property values, before we get for instances, get instances, now we want to get the project property values. Um, we want a course here as individual and the object property is our F. So it doesn't like because uh, object property wo uh, wants a uh, how well named individual course is a uh, how well individual not named so we need basically to um, yeah this, it is a method that is as uh, that transform every uh, how well individual is named individual that is the dot as how well individual it automatically perform every check and uh, casting operation. So here the get object property uh, get a node set like before. So we have a node set of a uh, well uh, named individual, and we can call it is followed like before. And is what is followed the node. Is follow and then we have a node set we need a set so we can call it the get flattened the version of the and so we can remove node and let leave set I do I perform the same operation that we performed in the two lines before node set and then the get flattened of the node set in one line 
at the end uh, I put a get flat hat. So we are not set uh, from the reasoner and that we flatten it to not set, we had a set. So here, if we run this, we should see now that the course name in the semantic web is followed by a person. So right now the students appear. Okay, so these are the, we can say, basic operation in a well PI for getting object properties, data properties from the plane, we can say ontology, and from the reasoner, from the reasoned version of the ontology. Then there are some more complicated stuff like getting uh, all the, the, the father, all the parents of a given class uh, up to a certain uh, step, but there are, yes, rarely used and uh, uh, particular. So this is the, the fundamental. Then a well PI, as we said, as I said before, it has for the version number four a wiki and Javadocs. And in the wiki, for example, there is documentation and uh, here and this documentation it has some example, for example, for the version number four that perform various operations. Uh, also like a converting in Tartle document format or well XML document format and so on. So now we, we complete in this way this example. Now we make a break, but before the break I will introduce you with the exercise so that we can start you can start after the break the exercise that is basically the last exercise that is basically starting from the result starting from the starting from the uh, ontology you created the last time two times ago uh, if you don't have that, that ontology, I can provide you the, the well. Use, create a similar program like this to read the ontology, uh, reason upon the ontology, you can start from this code, and check from consistency and inferences, uh, compute the inferences in the ontology, look and print individual object properties and data properties inferred at, and non-inferred, so using the reasoner dot to get something and using the entity searcher and print the vacation spot and the activities you defined in your ontologies. So navigate that ontology and print some uh, instances. This is not for the exam, so you should not submit anything. And here there are some uh, resources and links. But before we can make five minutes, ten minutes. <laughs>